Now the time has come to finally get rid of this Ariston boiler and install this cheapest boiler I could find on the day, this uh, glowworm. So let's get on with it, get this boiler out and get this boiler on the wall. As always, before we remove the boiler, we carry out our safety touch, our safe isolation and our gas tightness test. Now before we drain this system, let's test the water quality. Now before we install this boiler, we need to check the water quality of the system. It even tells you that in the manufactured instructions. So I've got my turbidity tube, I'm just going to take a sample off this radiator. So far it looks pretty good, I've just got to drop it down to this line there and then look through here and if I get it nice and clear at the bottom then I know there's no magnetite in there. You could also stick a magnet down there and see if you can draw any magnetite out but looking at this it looks pretty good. Now you can use a magnet like this one, I'll just show that it is a magnet so you can see it. These are good because they're telescopic so you can slide it in push it in and then just leave that in your water and then give it a few minutes and then pull it out and then if you've got any metal on the bottom of the magnet here then you know it's full of magnetite. So you can clearly see here there is no problems with this system water at all so let's get it drained. Now it's all drained, let's get this pipework disconnected. So we've disconnected the connections on the flow, hot, cold, gas and return. So let's get this flue taken out. So now the pipe works disconnected, the flue's out, we can now remove this beast. Now when it comes to fixing this boiler onto the wall, glowworms supply you with these bolts. Now, this boiler's bracket is slightly different than most of the boiler brackets out there. It is actually fixed to the boiler. Now, if you remember the old Raveneat boilers, it's pretty much the same as that. So this is how we're going to secure the boiler to the wall on this fixed bracket. So let's see how we're going to get this in the right place. Now... The boil of the glowworm comes with this template and these numerous holes for different types of flue systems. So depending on which elbow you've got or which turret elbow you've got, depends on which hole you've got to cut out. So what I do is I cut a hole out in the template, slide the flue into the hole, prop the flue up with a bit of flattened copper so you're in the right spot. Place that over the hole. We now can level this up mark where the holes are, drill the holes and then we can hang the boiler on. That is the easiest way I know of getting the bracket in the right place. If you can think of any other way easier than this put in the comments down below. Now let's see if these two bolts are actually in the right place and if this system of glow worms is any good. So I'm put it over the holes. Oh, well, that was bloody easy. 
Now one of the things we have found out about this system is you need a little extension on your ratchet to be able to get on the bolts. You can't get a battery drill in, you can't get a spanner in. So you need to make sure you've got a little ratchet set with a little extension and it fits in perfectly then. Now we're not just going to rely on these two bolts that Glowworm have supplied, we're also going to put a couple of screws in with washers to extra fix it. Now before you put the turret on top of the boiler, we need to pour some water down the outlet of the boiler where the products of combustion come out. So in here, not in the outside because that'll fill the boiler with water. <laughs> um, this is to fill the trap up because we don't want to allow the products of combustion to go through a dry trap. So just pour your water through there. But make sure you don't put too much water down because we've not connected the condensate trap yet. But you can hear the trap is filling. Anyway, don't forget that. Also, before you actually put the turret on, just get some silicon spray or silicon grease. Go around the seal at the top of there and then around the seal in here. And then when we come to fit this in, it slots in nice and easy. Now it's time to get that flue turret fitted. Now we're going to put the turret on. There is an instructions for this because here we've got like little cams to adjust them. So if I put the two back screws in the right place, the two front ones aren't, but if I just put a flat screwdriver in and turn them around like that, It now brings the two front ones into the two holes here. So, a bit strange that, but anyway, at least they've thought about it and give you some kind of way of adjusting the screw holes. That's another new, slightly different thing I found. Now, before you do put this turret on, just make sure, first of all, you put this ring on, which is your Makes it look neat. And don't forget to put your fixing clip on, making sure you put your screws in and the little fiber rubber seal on there. Once you've done that, you can now put your turret on. Now, just put the securing collar onto the flue and the turret elbow, and you can see there's two holes here and there's actually two on the other side. So we have to put securing screws through this one and through here to make the flue connect to the turret. We're not going to do that because I'm going to leave it as a fault because remember this is a training centre. So I'm going to leave that as a fault so our trainees have to pick up that fault. But they all watch these videos I'm supposed to do so maybe I might put one screw in. Anyway. Now I've got a little complaint glowworm. First of all, this cover don't fit very well because of this bracket sticking out here. So where you've turned this edge over here, it's stopping that going back. And also, it's an absolute nightmare to try and put any sand and cement on that flue. What's that all about? <laughs> anyway, just uh, a little complaint. But don't forget guys, you will need to sand and cement on the inside and the outside. Even if you do put the securing screws in. But, just a little gripe. Just to continue my little gripe about the flu system glowworm, what's this all about as well? So you've got your collar, you come to slide it over the top. And this collar needs to fit here. So, that ring you can see there sits inside there. So you put your flue through, you've done your nice sand and cementing, and then you come to put this colour on the end because you want to make it nice. And it's as tight as tight can be. So some guys stretch it like, pull it, try and pull it apart like this to be able to get it on like this. Some guys soak it in water 
and then by the time you've got it on, which does look quite nice and neat, you've ruined all your sand and cement you've just put in. So, I used to love the rubber ones. Why did we go to this rubbishy plastic? But that's where it's supposed to fit, guys, and it is a bit of a struggle to get on. But one of the things I do like is when we come to put a plume management kit on this. So some of you may remember where we used to have to change the full terminal, but we don't now, because basically you get yourself a flat screwdriver like this, slide it in that slot, and then this section comes out. And then you can put your elbow on there, so you can go up and help. They do a diverse tour of this as well, so it's 45 minutes. Uh, 45 degrees so I do like that idea that is and it's dead easy to clip back in it's easy but change them please now all the pipe work is finished but what I did was I got two of my trainees to pipe this up I gave them the manufacturer's instructions I gave them all the tools and equipment and I left them to it to see how difficult they found it. Now, this is the finished article of what they came up with, but... <laughs> We've got a tub full of scrap because they didn't check the manufacturer's instructions that these two were piped the other way around. So they pipe the return pipe here into this left hand one and then they pipe the cold into here. Like you would on a normal combi and like it was piped up on the one we removed. So obviously they didn't read the instructions, they just cracked on and thought it was the same as all the others. So they were a bit shocked when they turned the water on and they said there's no water coming out of the tap. And then I said, oh, you've piped these two the wrong way around. So they have to rip it all out and restart again. Obviously not too happy. And this is what they came up with. But you've got to let people learn, haven't you? So I asked them, how did you find it? And they weren't too happy. They weren't happy about the condensate pipe and they also weren't happy with the way the blow-off goes as well because they said everything was crossing over how it was before. But if you are working in a kitchen and there's a worktop here and the pipes are already coming through the uh, cupboard or the pipework comes out through the wall like they do in a new build and all plastered in there's a lot of work to do beforehand if you're changing the standard layout to this boiler. So my advice would be, if you can't make alterations easy to the pipework underneath the boiler, then I wouldn't be buying this boiler. I'd go for one where you've got the same layout in pipes. Glowworm do make this pre-made bend for this return pipe, but it's gonna cost you about 12 quid because it doesn't come with the boiler. That's not a good idea, Glowworm. Why don't you just put it in with the boiler and save people a lot of time and a lot of heartache. Now we've finished installing this boiler, we need to fill it up. So we need to put it in program P08, which will actually put the diverter valve in mid position for us. So we need to go into the engineer's mode and we need to go into our secret code. So we need to tick that. We need to go into the P settings. So we need to tick that. And we want P08. We need to tick that. So now while we're filling up, this will put the boiler in well, put the diverter valve in mid position, but it won't put the pump on and it won't turn the burner on. This will last for 15 minutes, so let's go and get it filled up. So now we've filled our central heating system up, we've finished with P08, 
but we now need to remove the air from within the boiler. So we need to go into P00. So what we need to do is press the back arrow. It now puts us back into the P. We now need to click that and accept it again. We're now in the zero, zero and accept that again. We're now in the purge program. So this function will work in the small domestic hot water circuit for four minutes and then in the heating circuit for one minute. It'll turn the pump on and off at regular intervals and this program lasts for five minutes. So once the five minutes is up or you're happy that you've removed all the air out of the system, you just press the back arrow, which will take you out of the P, out of the P setting, back arrow again, which is back into the main menu, and back again, which completely takes you back to the beginning and the boiler is now ready to work. What they've got to do now is commission it. But with that fed up, They've gone home and they want to commission it tomorrow. So that's the next task for this boiler. We're going to get it commissioned. But not in this video. You're going to have to wait to part two. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video on the installation of this glowworm micron. And look out for part two where we go through the full commissioning. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in part two. Cheers.